I'm standing in front of the 26 deck. 26 deck is built very similar to the hall. We use similar laminate structure with the exception of the cockpit. The cockpit floor, we use the PVC foam, the Divinacel foam, to establish the strength we need with the low weight. This is a nine inch cleat, a four bolt cleat. One very important point is that every bolt that is screwed into the decks of the seawards in lieu of a clearance hole is drilled and tapped. So every bolt has to be screwed into the fiberglass and in this case there is an embedded piece of metal, uh, aluminum 6061 T6 aluminum that, that is tapped through that holds this cleat in position. And then on the bottom of course we use nuts and large fender washers. On the Seaward 26 deck, you can pick up the entire boat by this cleat and the two aft cleats only. The large flat areas or the slightly cambered areas of the 26 deck are supported by the headliner. And we use a unique method of construction for that whereby the headliner is glued from underneath directly to the deck and then the air is removed by a vacuum bag. Uh, what this accomplishes is it removes all the air that's between the deck and the liner and the headliner and the deck become one. And you can see where the opening ports are cut out here that the interior, the headliner, which comes off of one mold, has no space between it and the deck. They directly reinforce each other and that eliminates the need for coring material, which also cuts down on the weight, and the weight at a very critical area high above the center of gravity. Lifeline stanchions are also typical. We drill and tap all four bolts. And again, we can pick up a Seaward 26 by four points. By lifting up the four stanchions, you can pick up the entire 26-foot sailboat. They're that strong. And again, with the, the chain plates, the two chain plates and the uh, forward stem plate chain plate on the 26, you can lift the boat, a 26-footer, right up off the ground. And I keep telling you this because I want you to know that we overbuild every boat to that degree. Earlier when we were describing the laminating on the hull, I showed you the shear of the hull where it came up and formed a J, a 180 turn came back down. Well that J fits right up here on the deck and it comes up and follows the deck and comes back down. And what it effectively does is gives you two or three mating surfaces with a lot of mating surface area when we glass these two parts together. It's a very strong process. These two surfaces, the hull and the deck, are bonded together with a chemical bond of a fiberglass compound. Then the edge is trimmed and a stainless steel half oval is applied with number eight machine screws every six inches. This is the third basic component of the uh, Seaward 26. It's the interior liner and it again is built in similar fashion to the hull. It's a one-piece fiberglass and we use no uh, coring material in the liner. That is actually all fiberglass, solid fiberglass. A couple of important features. One, the water tank is molded right into the liner. This hose here is the water fill which goes up to the deck and this hose here is the vent 
that allows air at, out uh, of the tank as water comes into the tank. While we're talking about the liner, it's a good opportunity to talk a little bit about the electrical system and plumbing system in our boats, which is being installed right now. Every piece of wire that goes into our boat is tin-coated copper. And then every fitting at the end of every wire is tin-coated copper. This will prevent that green effect that you'll see with old corroded connections, electrical connections in a boat. Okay, we're still talking about our wiring system here now. I want to tell you that every wire that we run is a jacketed duplex or triplex wire and it's run full length with no connections between components. But wherever there is a component such as at this point we have our pressure water system, we have a connection that is waterproof. It's waterproof because the wires themselves have a heat shrunk and glue material that attaches themselves to the wires at each end. And then for maintenance purposes, you can easily take these apart and you have again your tin coated copper. This is the electrical panel on the 26 and again you can see that every one of our tin coated wires is heat shrunk as the terminal ends which are also tin coated go into the circuit breakers and switches on this panel. And while we're talking about wiring, every one of these wires, whether they be accessories, cabin light, or steaming lights, the wire runs from the panel to the resistance, to the light bulb, or wherever it's going, with no breaks along the way.